Hi there, this is Alicia with Osa the German Shepherd and today we're going to go over dogs that were bred to be miserable. I don't get a bunch of angry breeders after me for this, but it does need to be said. There are dog breeds out there that are nowhere near what their ancestors used to be and were bred just for looks and now no longer are useful like they were back what they were originally bred for. So this video isn't meant to crap on breeders. I know that the good breeders out there love their dogs very much, get them the medical attention that they need, and have a real passion for what they do. But over time with breeding for certain exaggerated features on dogs, it's actually ruining their health. And people are paying extra, not just for the dog up front, but for the medical procedures that they need later on. And it's not exclusive to just dogs. It's seen in cats and horses and all sorts of other animals. So first we'll start with German Shepherds. German Shepherds today are roughly 20 to 30 pounds heavier than they used to be way back 100 years ago. If you look at these pictures here, these are both dogs from Osa's past. At the end of this video, I'll show a quick slideshow of some other dogs in Osa's history just because it's fun to see kind of how, where dogs came from uh, back in her history and bringing it up to today. But in working line German Shepherds, they should still have the straight back because they need to work, they need to function. But with the show line shepherds, it was deemed attractive for them to have the sloping back, and so breeders bred for that sloping back. Unfortunately, that really messes with their hips, and it's just not good structurally for them. So this picture with Osa, uh, she is West German show line, and so they do strive to breed for both looks and for health, and so there is strict testing on hips and elbows, and then they'll have a, a, a more slight taper in the rear end. It still doesn't do the dog any good, and I still think that they should stop it, but that's, that's Osa's background, and then like I said, with the working line, they generally have the straighter back. Now, I'm sure you saw this one go coming, but basically any flat-faced dog breeds like the Bulldogs, the French Bulldogs, Boston Terriers, the Pugs, they were bred to have the excessive wrinkles and the, the smushed faces everybody thought was cute, so they bred it to exaggerate that feature. And the problem with this is that it makes it so these dogs can't breathe. A lot of them need uh, surgery in order to breathe properly, and with some of these breeds, in order to be born, there needs to be a C-section done because their heads are too big to fit through the birth canal. And so pretty much any of the flat-faced breeds, they're probably the worst on the list of just, you know, they cost a lot of money and it's expensive later down the road to do a lot of the corrective surgeries just so they can function and be able to breathe properly. You can see the big difference in the picture, how it's much less exaggerated uh, features and moving to today where you can't even see the dog's eyeballs. It's, it's really become ridiculous. But I know that there are some breeders out there that are recognizing the problem and are trying to correct it slowly over time. The dachshunds were originally used to hunt rabbits and foxes and other types of tunneling animals. Nowadays, they have the really short legs and the longer backs, which gives them back problems. And they can struggle to jump over just the simplest of objects as their bellies almost touch the ground now. You can see from the older photo, they were a little bit higher up off the ground and were a little bit more of an athletic dog. They didn't have quite the long backs. And now they just look like a dog that really struggles through life. The Basset Hounds were originally bred for hair hunting and their amazing sense of smell. But today, with the excess skin, the longer ears, the droopy eyes, the shorter legs, these dogs are now prone to yeast infections in their, their skin folds, ear infections, eye problems, and spinal issues. The Bull Terrier was once used for bull baiting and vermin control. Today's Bull Terriers have more of an egg-shaped head 
and this unnatural shape causes problems like dental and even mental health problems. They are also prone to several skin conditions. The Chow Chow is believed to have come from China as a sports dog to do things like hunting, herding, sled pulling. These dogs have now been bred to have excess skin, thicker th coats, and more of a wrinkled face, and this creates reduced vision, overheating, and skin and coat problems. St. Bernard's and Newfoundland's, they're kind of similar, so I'm lumping them together, but both breeds were much more functional than they are today. The St. Bernard's were famously known as those rescue dogs that brought you brandy when you were stuck on the mountain in the French Alps, while New Newfoundland's were often used on ships to help fishermen. They were great for hauling fish nets, pulling wood carts, and for water rescues. They were capable of saving a grown man from drowning. Now these breeds today have a lot bigger skulls, a deeper forehead, and more squished in faces. This makes for a variety of modern day health problems such as difficulty breathing, overheating, and even eye problems. The list goes on from here, from Cavaliers to Poodles, Boxers, Saluki, West Highland Terrier, Bearded Collie, and I suspect the list will get larger with time with bad breeding practices. And that about does it for this video. Again, this isn't to crap on the breeders. They're, they love their dogs. They're just kind of breeding to what is popular. And so it, it comes down to just public awareness and hopefully eventually getting those dogs back to where they're not having to go to the hospital and get reconstructive surgery because of the way that they were bred. But that about does it and we'll see you next time. Myself wondering what did happen to the last ten. I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turn back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you.